You need that dopamine hit? This could help. The Google Nest Hub is basically a glorified photo frame with speakers. Yeah, I said it, but I'm not saying it like it's a bad thing. My household is already partially invested in the Google Home ecosystem, so we're already in the habit of yelling into the ether to crank the Encanto soundtrack just one more time. Or check on the weather, despite being perfectly capable of stepping out the front door. Being a hands-free screen, the first place this lived was the kitchen. Envisioning grand cooking adventures, using it for recipes instead of a phone. Adding a whole new layer of convenience. <laughs> yeah, that didn't really happen. And we still tend to use our phones for recipes. As the mobility is more convenient, and the Nest display isn't really much bigger anyway. It was the prompt of sleep tracking that had me trying this out in the bedroom though. During setup, it did make it clear that there is no camera here. So while it can't be used for video calling, it also means that it can't snoop on your bedroom activities in too much detail. Just how restless you are, what sleep cycle you're in, how your breathing is doing, and how much you're snoring. You know, not too much detail. Now, it should be noted that the sleep tracking will eventually become a subscription feature, likely bundled with Fitbit Premium. But it is listed as free until the end of 2022. I gave this a whirl for 10 days alongside my Fitbit to compare, and it was actually more accurate than I expected for something not constantly checking my pulse. Over the 10 days, sleep stages and sleep start times were often quite similar, frequently being within 15 minutes of each other. But there was one outlier of nearly 80 minutes. Wake times were not so good, with half being rather close and the other half being out by a large margin. But this can be thrown out of whack if you share a bed with anyone. While it can be set to restrict tracking for just your side, this doesn't quite work if someone decides to sprawl once you get up. There was also one night where tracking just plain failed too, leaving large gouges of empty data. As I mentioned though, this is definitely more accurate than what I expected from a visual and audible tracker. Sure, it can't track your heart rate, but it can provide feedback on respiratory rates as well as sound and light disturbances helping you sort out environmental impacts that much more. While really cool, it unfortunately only feels like part of the picture, but I hope with more data and time, things will get better. The Soli sensors do also have a use beyond just counting how many times you do donuts in your sleep with some limited gestures. Sadly, the only useful one was for stopping or starting music, still missing many of the slightly more useful ones the Pixel 4 had. Other than sleep sensing, I didn't get much value from this being in the bedroom. Being a clock overnight was even limited as the LCD backlight can't get too bright before leaking too much light into the room. An OLED would be better, but then it'd be a worse photo frame. So with that, we moved back to its original home in the kitchen. It's been pretty valuable there for showing off our extensive fur baby photo collection in a higher traffic location. Often worth stopping for that dopamine hit during my many coffee breaks. It leverages the ambient light sensor well too, knowing how to perfectly illuminate your gallery, making it actually look like a convincing photo frame, then swapping into night mode once the lights go out. I started to appreciate the display for YouTube music too, from watching the associated film clips or just knowing what was playing without having to ask. It is rather annoying that I can't thumbs up or down music from the screen though. Especially with Google still thinking that all the dog relaxation music is actually for me. The UI overall tended to be a bit on the slow side, frequently lagging while just navigating around. I'm not that bothered by the speed though, as it's not like a phone where you're in front of it all day, as long as it keeps giving me that dopamine. The speakers seem about on par with the original Google Home providing solid audio for a reasonably sized room. Just don't expect too much bass or overwhelming volume. Something that should be mentioned is that with the recent Sonos lawsuit, Google had to remove some functionality from the whole Nest Hub range, with speaker group volumes being the main thing, but some might also experience setup issues. I did perform a factory reset and start over though, and my setup experience remained the same. So overall, the Nest Hub is a bit of a mixed bag. Sleep tracking can be useful if you already have something against wearables and dislike keeping track of battery levels. 
but with only half a picture, it may not be helpful. I'd really love to see Google completing the picture by merging it with Fitbit data. The accuracy of that sleep tracking would be amazing. The Nest Hub would definitely be best suited to anyone already invested in the Google ecosystem, but you'll also need a good source of photos to pull from. Ideally, kids, pets, or that faint memory of the last time we were actually able to travel. With that though, free dopamine every time you walk past. Cheers for making it all the way to the end. Chuck's a like if I did alright, sub for more, and I'll catch you in the next.